Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so to start off our desert base here, the first thing you're going to need of course is a base. This here is a 40mm base, I'm going to be using it because uh, it's going to be a good size comparison and show up pretty well on camera but you're going to use any size base you need to for your miniature and then as you can see here i'm using this uh, citadel texture tool so i can spread around my base to the actual base itself which is going to be my uh, vallejo earth texture that you can see that i'm using here because it's got such fine small little bits of uh, sand in there and it's going to really help out for the scale for doing a desert sandy base now you could of course use uh, any sand you have on hand um, I'm trying to keep it uh, as realistic as I possibly can and make it within scale and this earth texture once we paint it up is going to really help sell the effect that it is within proper scale but if you're not worried about that then that's perfectly fine use whatever sand you have available for this it'll still give off an awesome effect and then it's just a matter of spreading it around here working out how you want to have it now I'm going to have my uh, earth texture a little bit raised on one side so I've got a little bit of like a mini sand dune in here I'm not going to go too massive with it but I just want it raised up on one side and keep the other side flat to show off the effect we're going to be doing in a little bit then once we have that dried up and you can see too I've also got some little bit of wavy patterns in there we're just going to be grabbing out some nice uh, super glue or you could also use PVA glue in there I'm just using this for the speedy dry time placing it in just a couple of places now I'm placing this in my low point of where I've placed the sand. My sand's uh, raised up more on the other side and very flat here and I'm going to be placing it on the flatter level and all I'm going to be doing now is sprinkling it on from my heavier grit uh, sand which is the stuff that I use on most of my bases which is just sand from my driveway that I've sort of uh, thinned down into smaller pieces and it's just a matter of placing them on to make them look like small rocks. Then once you're happy with the arrangement of rocks you've got on there as well you can see I've got uh, nice and glued down. I'm going to come in now with some agrellin earth which is going to be sort of a secret part to this uh, thing. It's going to really help out with our basing by giving off this extra effect because the agrellin earth once it dries it cracks as it is a crackle paint so it gives off this awesome cracking effect like in uh, you see in some deserts where the area is dried up because of from moisture and stuff and it creates these nice cracks in the earth and it's going to really help sell our nice dry desert effect so it's just a matter of placing this around and this is also why i have my lower down area when i was placing my earth texture as well i've got that little raised bit and that very flat bit i'm going to be placing it down the flat bit because it's weird sort of more of the moisture in that would settle and that's where it's going to naturally crack so just a matter of placing it around here and making it look nice now you can't control the crackle effect so that's totally random but let's hope it turns out awesome then once we have our crackle effect all nice and dried and got that awesome crackling effect that we've got to, and this one came out pretty cool I think, but it's going to be totally random every time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Citadel skulls here. You can get them in a nice pack of heaps and heaps and heaps of skulls, probably a lifetime worth of skulls for miniature painting uses in this. So I'm going to be placing this on the basis of someone's died out in the desert and we've got this nice uh, skull that's been dried up from all the desert sand and really help add on a extra little visual piece to the miniature as well so I just grab some super glue placing it down here in a place that's going to look cool I'm going to just sort of centralize with it because we want some something to focus on while we're painting up these bases then as you can see I've just primed it up here just a nice simple black and white prime we can then start off with our painting so I'm going to be using a yellow ochre here so I'm starting off with a nice very deep uh, darkened down yellow color as our main base so going over this in a few layers really building it up since uh, I'm using a model air paint it's very uh, very very thin so I'm going to go over in quite a few coats to get that layered up uh, effect but I'm um, paying a little bit more attention to our cracked earth area because that's our area that was uh, all had the most moisture left over and it's cracked the earth um, from how it's evaporated so I want to still have a little bit more effect there so I'll pay a little bit more attention to there before spreading it out to that sand then once we have that nice and covered up everywhere we need to I'm going to come in with some khaki and that's going to give us our bit more realistic color because we've gone now with our deepest 
shadows and recesses so now we can come in with our first layer of highlights now as you can see i'm just dry brushing up here with a big makeup brush I'm really getting it all over don't be afraid too when you're using uh, crackle paint once it's dried and set like this uh, it's generally held on there really really tight so you don't have to worry about it dry brushing off so if you're afraid of that don't be too scared that it's very unlikely that to happen so then once we've got that first layer of uh, dry brushing done i'm going to come in now with some stonewall gray and we're going to be using the stonewall gray to of course painting up the little rocks we placed on here because we're adding in that visual story element to our base and really enhancing it so we want to enhance that some more too and not just have it all dry brushed all over the same give it a little bit of visual interest so we're picking out those different colors for our rocks and really setting in the effect of telling a nice story on our base and then once we've picked out those rocks, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some ivory. And we're going to be using the ivory to be painting up our skull. And we're using ivory rather than a bone colour because I want the skull to be nice and really bleached out uh, bone material. And when uh, bone is really bleached out, especially out in the sun and in the desert and stuff, it goes very, very white. So with all that heat baking down on it, it's really bleaching it out. So that's why we're going with the ivory here. Then once we've picked out that skull, we're going to come in now with some wash. And we're going to be using Seraphim Sepia, which of course is a nice, uh, good sort of base tone that we want for our uh, desert colour. Because having that sepia colour rather than a brown wash, brown wash is going to make it look more dirt-like. Sepia is going to really help make it more uh, desert and arid earth-like. Especially for those recesses, because that's what we're mainly doing it for, is the recessing. And we've gotten all those base layers down. Then we're going to come in with that nice wash to really get into all those nooks and crannies really especially pay attention to the areas with the crack too we want to really make it seep in between those cracks and really show that uh we've got those dark spots there then once we have that completely dried up we're going to come back in with khaki now and do the exact same thing we did before which is come in with our dry brush a little bit smaller one this time since we're trying to avoid those rocks in the skull and stuff like that and coming in and giving it an all over dry brush now this time i'm going to be a little bit more careful like i said before when we're dry brushing originally and i'm going to be paying more and more attention to our sandy area and less attention towards the area that has those nice cracks in it so just a small dry brush over there and then a heavier dry brush over that uh, earth texture area then once we have those highlights complete with our dry brush i'm going to do a second layer and this is going to be skeleton bone and this is going to be another good overall layer really adding in a lot of depth with adding in these different layers of dry brushing over it to really help sell the effect that there is different types and different grades uh, grades of sand all throughout this uh, desert -y sort of area and as you can see i'm very very particular just focusing it on our sandy area rather than our crackle area to really sell the effect that one area used to have a lot of more moisture than the other then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some mummy robes, which is an off-white, very similar to our ivory colour here. And all I'm going to be doing is just giving a quick dry brush, or an overbrush, I guess, more than a dry brush, uh, just over the rocks, really making it look like they're sun bleached out as well, like that skull that we're going to be doing here. And as I just said, as we painted up those rocks with our sun bleach sort of effect with the strong colour, I'm coming back in with our ivory, and we're going to be using that for our skull because like i said i want that skull to make it look like it's been there a long time and the bones are really dried out and bleached from that sun so ivory is what we're going to need to do this and really just paying attention to those areas where the sun is going to be more hitting so the top of the skull the around the eye sockets and stuff like that and then once you've done that we're going to add in some more sort of special effects we've got here and that is going to be adding some grass tufts to really emphasize these bases so got this nice one here by gamer grass which is very nice tall dried out sort of like reedy type grass and then i've got some other ones here by uh, warlord games which is just standard sort of desert dried out tough now of course we want to go with the more yellowy and dried out tufts rather than the green ones but i mean you can have little spots of nice grass growing that uh, in deserts where it can be a little bit green so don't be afraid to if you want to add in i'll just be a lot more sparing with the brighter colors and we want to stick more to those browns and yellows and oranges and then once you've got those on you place them happy you want to that's basically our base done and it's just a matter of looking around figuring it out and seeing where it's not going to over clutter or get distracted less from where the miniature will be sitting on the piece 
And then once you've done that, that's your base complete, but there's one important step to do after that, is to just paint a colour around the rim of your base. Now this will be to match your army or whatever you want, just as long as it's black. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, no. It's whatever colour you need to match. Uh, for me, it's black. i got to be painting all my bases black. I just love the effect it gives off. It gives a nice frame and sort of makes it like there's a diorama edge around there. So that's why I go with black, but don't be afraid if you need to use another colour for it. And there you have it, all nice and complete, how to paint up a desert style base. And I hope this is useful for you, whether you want to base up your own miniatures like this, or you just want to use it as some inspiration to get ideas for basing up your own army. So I hope this has been helpful, especially giving some variety in there and having our crackled earth and our very... Uh, normal sort of sand area sort of giving some visual interest to the piece but not too much visual interest that will distract from whatever miniature you want to sit on top so i hope this has been helpful for you guys and i hope you'll follow along and doing what i did here with our base and really giving that nice awesome sort of visual diorama style look to the piece and really enhance some of your miniatures you're painting up but with all that said i'd like to thank you all for watching and i can't wait to see you guys in the next video